The next step is to calculate balance sheet changes, or speaking new terminology, changes in the statement of financial position. So let's do it. As I have already said before, changes in assets have the opposite cash flow effect. So for example, if property plan and equipment goes up, then cash goes down. Changes in liabilities have the same cash flow effect. If share capital goes up, also cash goes up. Therefore, if you use simple formula, beginning balance less ending balance, or 2008 less 2009 balance, you get correct change for your cash flow statement. You can use the same formula for assets and liabilities. Now you can see why it is so important to care about pluses and minuses. Again, a check. Total of all changes should be zero, without subtotals, of course. Once we have calculated all changes in the balance sheet, we can proceed further. Each change in the balance sheet has some effect on statement of cash flows, and each change must therefore be taken into account somewhere there. Otherwise, you would get some mess. So here, let's determine the part in statement of cash flows where the change enters. Then, we have blank statement of cash flows below. Once we classify the change, we will put it to the relevant line. Change in property plan and equipment, its investing part as purchases and sales of PPE enter there. As the change in cash flows was negative, it implies that company spent some cash in PPE. Therefore, we put the whole change in the line purchase of property plan and equipment. Change in inventories and trade and other receivables are typical working capital changes that enter to operating part. We put these changes here as decrease in trade and other receivables and increase in inventories. 